All right. So recently, I was tasked to make a game like Color Switch. And so I thought we'll just take a ball, lock it in all other axes, and just add force in y axis whenever the player presses the space key, uh, or you know taps on the screen. And this is how that turned out. So if you look closely, what's happening is every time I add, every time the ball jumps, whenever I press space, right, the ball jumps, and every time it jumps, it jumps a different height, and that's why. It's very different than what the game color switch has, right? Like you see, I press space. The first time it jumped, it jumped some height, and the second time that I press space, it jumps some height. And then when it, so just now you saw, right? Like the height jumps is never determined, and that's why this. And why is this happening? Right? Let's take a look at that also. Uh, so let's see how I've implemented right now. So the way I've implemented right now is just I take a jump force. Uh, which you can configure from the editor, and I just add an impulse on the ball in the up direction, uh, so it can jump up. So this is this ball is a rigid body, uh, and I'm adding a force in the up direction, um, and this variable is configurable from the editor. You can change this. Um, so yeah, whenever you press space, it adds a force in the up direction in, to the rigid body, and that's why that's how it's jumping. Uh, so the problem with this is. That it's like we saw, right? The the jump height is never determined. So the simplest thing to do is instead of using apply impulse or uh, you know add force or one of these functions that you have in all some of these engines, the simplest thing to do is just take the velocity vector and assign it every time. So what I'm doing here is um, in Godot, this is the velocity vector that they have exposed. Um, for the rigid bodies, so it's called linear velocity, but in Unity, it's called uh, you can do rigid body dot velocity, uh, and I'm just applying the jump force multiplied by the uh, up vector, and I've also gone ahead and changed this value to thousand from two thousand. So let's see how it goes. So this this actually will solve the problem, uh, as you can see. Every time I press space, the because we are writing, we're assigning a new value to the velocity vector every time I press space. That's why we get this the same jump height every time. But what I thought would be cooler is if you can, in the editor, instead of specifying the jump force, if I can specify the jump height and another parameter, the time it will take to reach that height. Okay, these two parameters, if I can expose into the editor, and uh, if I can just play with these two values, I can Im I can reproduce any platformer game jump uh, feel, right? Because that's that's what that's what it is about, like. The Mario character jumps certain height and it comes down uh, afterwards, right? And it takes some time to reach that height. So uh, the Mario jumps maybe slower and it gains some height and it comes down uh, after that. Uh, and Super Ma Super Meat Boy or one of these games, uh, it takes some time to gain the height and it comes down after some time. So that's why these two parameters are really important: the height, the jump height. And the time it takes to reach that height, okay, to reach the peak of the height. Uh, so if you can expose these parameters, then your character control will become way more designer configurable. Like you can hand it over to game designer, and he'll be able to reproduce the feel that he wants. He'll be able to produce the feel that he wants very easily because it's very user friendly. Uh, so it will be cool to do that. So I was looking up, and I found the way to do this. And this is how you do it. So what you do is. You have so the H over here is the height, uh, the jump height. T over here is the uh, time it takes to reach the peak of the height. Uh, and these are the formula. So you basically take these values. Here are the values that I'm using: uh, two, two seventy and zero point three. So it takes zero point three seconds to reach the height of two seventy. Uh, and yes, so so yeah, this, this is the formula for it. So you. So, but for this, what what is needed is, like you can't use the gravity that these engines provide, uh, because you'll have to have control over it. Because you, you want to control how much time it takes to reach the height, and the you may not have changed. So, let's say you, uh, in first case, you assign the height as two hundred and time as zero point three. So it takes zero point three milliseconds to reach the height of two hundred. 
uh, but then you change the height from uh, so so you keep the height same you keep the height as 200 uh, but you change the time to let's say 0. Point, uh, or you just make it one right so what that means it now it takes one entire second to reach the height of 200 uh, the height remains the same the time changes so that's why uh, you'll so what governs how much how easily a physics body a physics object can gain a height and that is gravity right so, and every time you change this you'll have to change the gravity that's why it's better to handle the gravity for the player controller inside your player controller script uh, and not use the engine gravity your physics engine gravity uh, so yeah that, that's the prerequisite for this system that you have to make your own gravity formula but that's very easy to do that's the simplest thing to do yeah so what this does is you have only two variables exposed h and t h is the height the jump height uh, t is the time it takes to reach the peak of the height and you calculate the gravity you calculate the jump velocity needed um, and then you apply the gravity over here so every physics uh, frame I'm applying the gravity uh, it's a very simple thing here and uh, so what the other thing I'm doing is uh, this is a vector in I mean this is a yeah this is a vector in this um, class of Godot uh, this is like our unity character controller uh, yeah so basically i'm using that vector and assigning the jump height which we found here um, and for some weird reason in godot the up is actually negative so like you can see here um, the ups is negative and the down is positive uh, so that's why i have to do that minus one into minus one yeah so basically when the player presses space i'm applying some height uh, so this is still not very different than that linear velocity approach but like in, in terms of implementation as in like in terms of uh, you know the, the jump implementation but how it is different is this so first of all let's take a look at okay, for, okay let me change this uh, quickly I'm just gonna do this we're gonna play again yeah so so it gives you the feel that you want right uh, like it's very similar to color switch. I've tried to make it as close to color switch as possible as you can see Right, so if we've, we've achieved the feel over here But what we've also achieved is just just take a look at the height that the ball is reaching when I press the space for the first time Right, it, it, it reaches somewhere over here Right, just keep that in mind and you keep this feel in the mind that we have with these values now what we're going to do is we're going to just change these values so we're going to keep the height same we're going to change the speed uh, the time it takes to reach peak of the jump to 0 0.7 from 3 and we're going to see how the, how the feel like you can see already the feel changes a lot now it's a very the height is still the same you can see it right the height is still the same it reaches the same height but just by changing that t value the time it takes to attain that height is so different so this gives so much ability for a designer to experiment with so many values like to uh, sorry experiment so many feel like player controller feel right so you can have this kind of a um, jump very slow jump where you have a lot of time to sort of react to things or you could you can have a very quick jump for you know precision platformers oh god that's so fast yeah i mean this is like um, this is similar to that game uh, that you play in google chrome when you don't have internet right it's, it comes down very quickly yeah but you, you can experiment a lot of feel game feel very easily with this as you can see so the ball is very heavy now like I've, this means that the ball is very heavy and the uh, inverse is also real like the inverse is also true so if i change this back to 0 0.3 and if you just change the jump height right let's make it uh 350 right now the amount of time so it will jump higher so it, it's jumping higher now you can see but the time it takes to reach attain that height is the same right so it's so quick to like it just it it just takes one second to you know to come 
closer to the field that you want to achieve like for a designer like so designer friendly you press space it at jumps the same height but the time it takes to reach this jump is different so same here let's make it 500 let's so it will reach a higher level like it will reach a higher uh, height <laughs> but the time it takes to reach that height which is higher than what you had previously is very quick it's the same right and this inherently gives you a lot of game design idea <clears throat> like through power ups and all that right like maybe you have a power up the time remains the same but the height increases so now the game is easily made a little more difficult and there's more challenge now so you see how much potential this gives just by configuring your controller like this <clears throat> and yeah so this is what i wanted to show uh, and i'm gonna link the video that helped me to achieve this it's a, a video on youtube it's a gdc talk so i'll just link it with the post you can check it out uh, the other thing that i want to achieve is, is just because yeah, i'm getting really intrigued by platformers now from this uh, experiment so i'm gonna try to explore more in that direction like let's make let's let's turn this into a platformer uh, so we can make a game like downwell or we can make a game like uh, mario and we can do other cool things like what happens if i leave space if i if i hold on to space i keep attaining height but as soon as i leave it it stops attaining height and it falls down right and these kind of cool things we can do uh, so like it gives so much control to the player you can hold on to the jump key and you can keep attaining height but as long as you leave it it comes down quickly right, so i want to do these kind of things so yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna make a platform out of this and i'll see you in the next post right see you guys